Viewers, we have with us uh, a special guest, uh, the chairman of the BRICS New Development Bank, Mr. K.V. Kamath with us. Uh, Mr. Kamath, thank you very much for giving your thank time. Thank you. Sir. So, uh, major summer of a decision uh, to annihilate uh, the parallel economy from the country. My straight question, Mr. Kamath, what is the feasibility factor of uh, inching towards that goal of uh, achieving a pure economy without the presence of black money, uh, you know, through this decision of monetization? A very interesting question. See, the decision has been taken. Uh, there is a broad speculation of how much of uh, money is unaccounted in the system. And from what I've seen in the last two or three days, uh, there appears to be of the high value notes about uh, one fourth. And if it's one fourth, you're looking at really four lakh crores of uh, unaccounted money, yeah. which uh, will not come back into the system. How they're going to address uh, you know, this money which doesn't come back is uh, something that the Reserve Bank will take a call. But to me, indeed, you know, the use of it for a purpose which was not appropriate, a corrupt purpose as it were, I think eliminating that is a big step. So I think it is a very worthwhile uh, uh, and uh, much needed step that has been taken. Right. And uh, there are arguments and uh, counter arguments uh, on this issue, Mr. Kamath, uh, about the impact of this decision on the shadow economy or the parallel economy, uh, which called. There is a group of people which says that this latest decision does much little to even move the shadow economy, which is approximately 25% of the total economy in this country. Uh, how do you look at uh, this uh, analysis? See, uh, there are several parts to this. Uh, I used to earlier on say, when I lived in uh, India, that uh, our economy has three parts. Mm. The counted part, the uncounted part, and the unaccounted part. Yes. So uh, this uh, probably falls uh, squarely in the unaccounted part. And uh, the unaccounted part is uh, also composed of two uh, parts. One is genuine cash uh, transactions that take place in the system. Mm. And uh, the second is the tra transactions should not have been there, but are uh, happening due to corrupt practices or uh, money that has been accumulated, which is uh, you know, put in uh, to the system at times you know, that suit the person and then withdrawn from the system. I think it's that part which is really uh, going to be under pressure. The genuine part of it, in every system, there will be cash transactions and that will, uh, I'm sure, continue to happen. The question is, uh, and I've seen a lot of uh, skeptics uh, uh, talk about this, Oh, but it will uh, reappear. That is the last bit, yes. which is uh, mm. the corrupt part, and uh, it will grow in no time. I think I have two uh, uh, points that I would like to make on this front. One, it cannot appear overnight. Yes. And uh, this accumulation of 4 lakh crores, if 4 lakhs is the number, is over a long period of time. So it's going to take a long, long time for this magnitude to, uh, to be collected. Second, I think people are missing the point that we're not living uh, today in yesterday's world. True. Yesterday's world, you could physically accumulate, the, accumulate this cash, and you had various means which worked in converting that cash into something uh, you know you put into uh, the, the real economy as it were. In today's world, the growth of technology has been at such a pace, and that pace is not stopping. It is only running at uh, it's a linear growth in terms of uh, technology. Uh, transactions are going to a move more and more to technology platforms, and b those transactions which are attempted to be done in cash will be checked and balanced. Mm. So you will have a trail on that every single transaction that you do. So I would think that the pace at which you can accumulate uh, unaccounted wealth or accumulate proceeds of corruption are, is going to slow down dramatically. Mm. So I would think that this uh, is a step taken at the right time to uh, virtually put a uh, stopper on this. So, so can we attribute your, uh, the, the analysis to the uh, other, other ways of money laundering like maybe the Benami transactions and everything you talk about technology too? I did not talk about Benami transactions but uh, uh, I have heard uh, our Prime Minister talk about it and I am fully with him on that. Mm. Uh, I would think that the pace at which technology has proceeded, mm. Benami transactions going forward are going to be, I would say, significantly difficult. Mm. Now, I would think the challenge is Benami transactions which are already in the books, how do you get them out? True. I think that is what uh, the government is trying to work on. But going forward, if you cut the source of cash as something that you could be holded and used in the system and you address Benami transactions, uh, then this uh, uh, you know, illness as it were, yeah. I think is uh, you know, once and for all cured. Mr. Kamal, let us talk about the quarters uh, apart from the uh, black money. What effect do you think will this have on the tax-related space uh, in this country and how do you analyze the repercussions uh, 
of this, especially when we are moving into a GST era in no time? Yeah, there are two or three uh, issues that need to be looked at here. Uh, let me get the first one out of uh, the way, and that is, uh, will there be a short-term pain? Indeed, there will be a short-term pain because uh, the system is trying to adjust to uh, lower cash uh, in, uh, the, in its veins, as it were. So uh, businesses will find their own solutions, mm. and that may mean that uh, they uh, uh, cut production, cut output, and so on for some time. So that could have a one-quarter impact on a business or, uh, at best, maybe a one-and-a-half-quarter impact on business. But let me look at the positives. Mm. This step basically puts, uh, I would say, um, uh, uh, gives a great fillip to transactions which are correctly priced mm. rather than distorted due to infusion or seepage of black money into the transaction. I should say real estate, uh, holding, uh, manipulation of the distribution system, all of which affect the common man. Uh, how does the common man benefit uh, at the end of this? In two ways. One, the price structure of these assets will definitely correct. So today itself, uh, before I was coming, now uh, the pundits uh, in the real estate business say, they expect a 30% drop in uh, and a correction in prices. Mm. Of course, the skeptics say, oh, but the builder won't sell. I mean, that is that just cannot happen. What is the builder going to do with the assets? Mm. He's going to sit on them forever? He's got, a, he's got a bill piling up there on interest. So he has to sell the asset at prices which are significantly lower than what he was expecting. One. And this is true of all commodities. The second is an, the impact on interest rates. Mm. Uh, a good monsoon, control on inflation, my estimate is that interest rates are already coming down. Yes. They have come down by 70 Seven basis years. points in the last quarter. They will come down by a 1 percentage point as is where is, without demonetization. Yes. Demonetization should bring down interest rates by at least another uh, percent. So we are talking of, if I am right, another 2 percent correction in interest rates. If there is a 2 percent correction in interest rates over the next 12 months, you imagine the momentum it will give to uh, the economy. Because if you remember, the 2003-2004 growth that happened in India yes. was on the back of a dramatic drop in interest rates. Yes. The first driver of the economy was not the uh, manufacturing sector. It was a lay consumer. You and uh, people like us uh, bu buying a home, a home became affordable, buying a motorcycle, buying a car, things to buy, put in our home. Suddenly, there was uh, a demand for these uh, things which uh, we were aspiring for and now they were affordable. I would think if a home loan interest rate is cut by 2 percent, suddenly you will have a buyer ready. Yes. And if the price is corrected, then he will be even, even more uh, eager buyer. So I see a very positive environment. Again, a dropping interest rate is a very interesting uh, thing. You mentioned taxes. A dropping interest rate, of course, spurs demand, uh, spurs economic activity, greater tax collection. A dropping interest rate also increases profitability because by the amount that interest rate has gone down, profit has gone up by that amount. And that is taxed. So you have a very uh, virtuous situation here where it will drive growth. At the same time, it will add to uh, uh, tax revenues in two ways. Growth itself is taxable, the profits out of growth. And B, incremental profits out of uh, a drop in uh, interest rates uh, would be taxable. Uh, so we should see a buoyant tax situation. In fact, uh, Mr. Kamath, you answered two of my next questions, real estate and also the interest rates. But then there is an analysis that this decision could lead to a cash crunch uh, in the economy and that will have a negative in impact on the consumption. Do you, can we buy this argument? See, let me look at it uh, this way. Uh, if 25% uh, of this uh, stock of 16 lakh crores was actually uh, not in the system, you're talking of 8 lakh crores. Mm. Now, what we will have to really take, uh, uh, take a view on is 15 days from now, how much of this, uh, s what has been sucked out, is going to come back into the system? That is. I'm sure 4 lakh crores won't, won't, come, back, won't come back, we're left with uh, 12 lakh crores. Mm. Of that, how much is pumped back in? I have, uh, as, as now, uh, I do not, uh, I'm not privy to this, mm. but that will be the true test of how much liquidity is available in the system. 100% mm. of it did not come uh, back because uh, already the lay user, maybe you, maybe me, I've been managing with uh, just a card and maybe a, a payment app. Yes. yes, I understand the man on the street, the common man, this is not uh, happening. But you can take this from me as an old banker, having introduced a a ATMs in 2000. Yes. The same thing was said about ATMs. They said, who is going to use the ATM except the privileged? Yes. Nobody had an idea of what an ATM was. People asked me a question, somebody sitting behind the ATM and 
giving out money. This was a level of ignorance. Now, if I say this today, people laugh. Says, How? Today, ATM is your first line. So I believe electronic cash is going to be the first line. And our Indian customer, a very smart person, so he has now understood that there could be a challenge. He will explore every single alternative and correct it. So I'm saying uh, we will wait and watch 15 days how much cash comes back into the system. But I'm sure this would have been planned, that cash has to come back into the system, yeah. the new notes, and uh, will be refilled uh, in the, the branch end or at the ATM end. Right. And you've been mentioning about the cashless economy, moving towards that. Uh, uh, you are a seasoned banker, in fact. What is your opinion about, uh, you know, of how can we actually push this idea of uh, moving towards cashless economy because in our country it is a country with complexities and on various fronts so because we have to educate people on using the plastic cards the, the, you, know, you have to address the digital divide addressing the uh, infrastructure challenges yeah, my view is again very simple in this uh, as devices increase smartphones increase this adoption is going to be automatic uh, because it will be seen as convenience Again, I take you to the ATM example. Why did ATMs become uh, popular? Because they were a convenience. Yeah, they avoided right. you are going into a bank and lining up for 20 minutes to get your cash. You now lined up for three minutes and got your cash. And as long as the bank was putting you know, enough ATMs on the street, I think uh, everybody was happy. So that's what's going to drive this. You just uh, basically swipe your uh, wallet and uh, you are off. Why do you need them to uh, take money out of your pocket? Yes. And... Uh, India, uh, Mr. Kamat, is the fastest growing economy in the world. Now, will there be any sort of disturbance uh, uh, to, this to this status of ours after this demonetization, at least in the short term? Or will India continue uh, to grow stronger amidst this gloomy economic situation across the globe, leaving to a, a couple of countries? I would think uh, there will be an adjustment process. As I said, that adjustment process could be a quarter, a quarter and a half. Uh, and uh, thereafter, uh, we should be back uh, to where we were. And... Uh, in fact, with uh, much more vigor, uh, as it were, because if uh, prices correct and uh, demand increases, uh, you grow better and uh, you grow faster. So, a uh, little bit of a correction in the medium term, and thereafter uh, a much stronger growth. Right. And Mr. Kamath, my penultimate question, people are in a state of panic. As, you know, as a seasoned banker, what, is you, what do you want to tell to the people of this country? I, I, I would think that uh, the government has taken the first step. It is uh, a major surgery, uh, and I think uh, we now have to wish uh, the patient well and uh, a quick recovery. And uh, I would think the public of this uh, country, I, I, it's a great salute to them that uh, they have borne this uh, with uh, great, I would say, courage and uh, great hope. And I'm sure uh, their uh, aspirations will be met. Sorry. And finally, uh, before we end this, uh, let's talk about this new development bank as well. How are things panning out there? Especially the focus is on positioning uh, NDB's credibility as an organization to support the sustainable infrastructure. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, let me put that in context. Uh, what we said when we were set up is that we have to justify the new in our name. Yes. Uh, otherwise, it was the BRICS uh, bank. So we said the new development bank has to add value. Mm. A year back uh, when we were set up, uh, particularly the Prime Minister of India, made a statement that uh, why don't you look at green infrastructure as a core goal True. for the first year. And uh, we ended up the first year doing all projects in uh, the green space so far. Uh, we may do an odd project which is not, but 90% of our lending will be to green. We set a target of about a billion uh, dollars the first year. I think we will uh, exceed it uh, handsomely. Maybe uh, we will be up by about 40-50% on that number. Other thing that we said was uh, that we will do things at speed and we will uh, look at timelines of three to six months against 15 to 18 months or maybe longer that are taken in a conventional context. And we have been able to meet these timelines by cutting out, I would say, processes and improving processes. The second part we said is uh, we believe that local currency is the way to go. Uh, so uh, we raised our first green bond in China in renminbi. And it works out cheaper than using dollar funding. And of course, to China, we are lending in renminbi. The second bond we are... Uh, working on a masala bond issue for India, yes. and we will lend uh, in uh, rupees. Thereafter, a ruble bond issue in uh, yes. Russia and so on. The interesting part here is a year back, most uh, countries were un unwilling to borrow in uh, local currency because yes. they thought you got dollars so cheap. But then you could demonstrate to them that the dollar interest rate is not the only element. There is also the exchange risk that comes with it. And at yes. the end of the day, the effective rate is 12 to 14%. I think now every country understands uh, 
this and uh, we now have request for local currency for from your country more importantly i think it has acted as a demonstration to other mdbs who were so far lending hard currency that the customer the developing country really needs to be supported in his local currency so that he doesn't take on risks beyond what he should take i think it has been a good year in terms of uh, setting out our own uh, agenda uh, maybe uh, explaining that agenda to other uh, constituents and then having acceptance of that we are now into the staffing mode and i think uh, we are fully functional and the status of rating agency sir uh, our international rating uh, should be in the first quarter of next year we expect uh, february or so and that's why i said first quarter is the rupee masala bond issue we did the chinese bond issue with uh, a chinese uh, rating that was the triple a and we got the finest rating that uh, any institution in uh, china can get right thank you very much mr kamath for giving your time thank so you. that is uh, the chairman of uh, brics new development bank uh, talking about demonetization issue and he clearly says that this is in the interest of the economic growth of this country in the long term stay tuned to dd news for other updates thanks for watching namaskar